and welcome to Studio 5. We've got an action-packed show for you this week. The star of the hit film War Room is the star of a new series. She's traded that prayer closet for a judge's bench. The director of a new romantic comedy, Divine Influencer, gives us a first look at the film. And in case you missed it or haven't seen it yet, Tom Cruise is taking Studio 5 inside the latest Mission Impossible. We've got all that for you this week, and we have this week's countdown of the top five stories in the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are your first two. At number five, summer surprises at the box office. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 took the top spot at the box office this weekend, but didn't deliver the punch that was expected. The world's coming after you. Earning $56.2 million, Paramount was banking on at least a $60 million take. God's children are not for sale. Sound of Freedom ascended to number two, showing the spending power of religious audiences at the box office. The low-budget movie pulling in $27 million. At number four. Stephen Curry. Do not rely on him to run your team. He was about five, six. <laughs> Looks like a little kid. 150 pounds soaking wet. That was when I first really understood. I'm different. The highly anticipated documentary Stephen Curry Underrated streams to Apple TV this week. How did I get here? I was the undersized scrawny kid that was just trying to figure out how to make it. Steph Curry is hurt. I was overwhelmed by everything. How would I respond? Let the work begin. Our countdown continues with number three in just a bit. We want to turn now to Eleanor's Bench. It's a mini-series following a juvenile court judge on a mission to deliver justice and grace. Actress Karen Abercrombie, who was unforgettable in the film War Room, trades the prayer closet for the judge's bench in this new leading role. There is rarely an easy day in this courtroom. All rise for the Honorable Eleanor Thomas. The project we're going to talk about, at least right now, is Eleanor's Bench? Yes. Tell me about the project. How did it, is it something you wrote? What is it? No, I didn't write it. Mm. I had worked with a gentleman in Virginia uh, many years ago, and at that time he was telling me about this project, Eleanor's Bench, and he said, well, uh, if it comes to be, would you be interested in playing Eleanor? I said, absolutely, especially, you know, after it filled me in on everything. I believe in redemption. We shot it. It's a powerful, powerful story about a um, woman who grew up on the other side of the tracks, inner city. My old neighborhood. Daddy, you can't stay here. I'm staying in my house. I've had a good run. I'm good with it. There's memories of your mom and me around every corner. And she leaves, and uh, she is in D.C. working for the premier um, law firm. And um, one thing leads to another. She leaves this prestigious law firm, and uh, she becomes a judge on a juvie bench. I want to see if I can get this one moved into my court. Look at your son. Do you want to be reunited? Mommy! Her mother was my best friend. I promised your mother that I would watch over you. Starts interacting with kids in foster care, kids who've aged out, kids who've got a bit of a record, and yeah, changes her life for the better. You know, it never made sense to me how people walk around their whole life and only talk to God when their life is falling apart and they could walk around with him all the time as their best friend. When did you, on this path of, of art, artistry, recognize the power of what it is that you do? I, I've always been attracted to it. I've always had a vivid imagination. I even had an imaginary friend when I was a kid. And um, in my neighborhood, I would create stories and all the other girls, I'd bring them in and we'd uh, I guess I was producing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we performed them. And uh, it, I just always loved it. It, it was just in me. And um, came time to go to college or decide what I was going to do. And my I wanted to uh, be a psychiatrist. But um, every time I had a free chance, 
I was looking for somebody's play to audition for. And eventually I got brave enough, I guess, and I auditioned for a school in New York, an acting school, got in and haven't really looked back. It's just something that I can't help doing, you know, mm -hmm. and to be able to use my gift uh, to pour light into the world, um, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's God honoring. And for me, it is worship. Oh, wow. You know, no matter what the role is, mm -hmm. you know, it's first between me and the giver of the gift. You know, I'm worshiping him, you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the journey been like? Easy, difficult? No, it, it's never been easy. Mm -hmm. I, I remember being very hungry as a student in New York. You know, my, my family didn't have much. I went on a wing in a prayer and around every corner he met me and took care of me. And um, I remember being very frustrated many times. I don't know that if what I'm doing is making a difference. I don't want to live with emptiness anymore. Down the road I realized that um, had I taken some of the roles I wish I would have gotten, it may have taken me away from what I'm doing right now. Mm. The course could have been very different. Mm -hmm. And you know, what I'm doing, it's, it's putting up, uh, putting some eternal stuff out there, you know, raising, so it's a, and I'm grateful, you know, and um, God is just opening up doors in a crazy, amazing way, you know. Hurt is a part of love. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Eleanor's Bench is streaming right now on the Pure Flix platform, and you'll want to keep a close eye to Studio 5 for some major news about Karen Abercrombie and an upcoming role. I really wish I could share it right now, but I have to wait just a little bit. Still to come. Hey guys, it's Liv. 360,000 followers. Cute, tag me in that. You've met the star. Now meet the director of the new romantic comedy, Divine Influencer. Sherry Rigby joins us next. At number three. And welcome to the set of The Chosen, home to season four. We're now halfway through the entire series, which is set to end after season seven. All right. And there's good news about production for this current season. Dallas Jenkins, the director and creator of the series, has announced it will continue filming the episodes of the fourth season after being granted a waiver to keep going with the production. The series was shut down after the Screen Actors Guild strike began Friday. Jenkins requested a waiver to continue production before the actors went on strike. He didn't get it at first, but he took to Instagram to plead his case, saying we fit all qualifications for an exemption and we're the good guys. We've treated your actors well. And the production company was given the green light Sunday. The Chosen also began airing on broadcast TV Sunday on the CW network. At number two, and speaking of The Chosen. I love influencing people, like where to shop, who to know. Hi, Mom. We're cutting you off financially. No, we're only doing this because we love you. Series actress Laura Silva can be seen in a new role, a romantic comedy, streaming to Pure Flix this week. Divine influencer, your character is who? I play Olivia Golden. Mm -hmm. Yes. The she, star. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, she is a star. Um, wow, she is a, she was a fun one to play. I really enjoyed playing playing Olivia. I was hoping you might have a job for me. You'd have to live here and I'd have to live here? I'm asking you to put her to work. Yeah, I guess it can't get any worse than this. Oh, okay. I get it. When she loses everything, that's when she realizes she's desperate and starts um, working at a homeless shelter for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but she ends up finding the real true joy of what it means to serve others and be there for, for each other. That leaves us with just one more story to share in this week's countdown. Welcome back to Studio 5. The film Divine Influencer begins streaming to Pure Flix this week. It's a romantic comedy we've previewed here before. And its director, who's also an actress, Sherry Rigby, is with us to share this behind the scenes look at the project. Hey guys, it's Liv. Oh, 
360,000 followers. Cute. Tag me in that. Divine Influencer, mm -hmm. tell me uh, about this project first and how you came to it. Absolutely. So a divine influencer for me has been a process for several years. We started working on the script, I want to say maybe 2015, 2016, and just started developing this character around what social media was all about today and what we were seeing in the culture. Mm -hmm. And so we started writing, but wanted to take it from this kind of comedic position. I love influencing people, like where to shop, who to know. Hi, Mom. Cutting you off financially. No. I've watched the the birth of it to now, you know, I feel like we're in adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> we're used to seeing you in front of the camera. Is directing new for you or is it something you've done? Yeah, so, you know, years ago, in front of the camera was always the position, and I think that's really how God brought me into the industry. He mm -hmm. put me in front of it and really started to allow me to see what talent as actors and actresses needed. And I could see where God was starting to lead me and position me. He mm -hmm. had brought me one place and was taking me to the next. Mm -hmm. And so I've been directing features. I did a television show for the Dream Center in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and then, um, back in front of the camera with the Kendricks and mm -hmm. then helping them with, you know, talent and scenes. And here we are today now, several feature films. Without giving too much, give me sort of the, the, the premise or synopsis, if you will, for this. Absolutely. So Olivia Golden is a young in influencer and she ends up going from being on the top of her game to losing everything when her parents decide to cut her off on her 29th birthday. So she goes from riches to rags. I used to have the most amazing life, a beautiful home. My life is in shambles. I need to sell some of these. No, Bruno, freeze! Olivia, Can we I had the locker next to yours. I work at Harvest Rescue Mission. I was hoping you might have a job. And she ends up in a homeless shelter and she ends up finding out what true influence is all about. And it's really about serving others and hearing the testimonies of people and how they're actually influencing those that they encounter on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So it's not about likes and shares and that type of influence. It's really about one-on-one -on -one conversation and understanding why people are who they are and also discovering the richness of who God is in these people's stories. I thought I was on the right track. You got this. Give me a sign. We won't give up. True influence is having people follow you because of how you positively affect them. When did he resonate within you the power of what you do? Mm, that's a great question. What resonated so deeply with me and what the Lord really set my feet on was not only did he start this career for me in a church coffee shop, mm. But he took me to Hollywood at a very critical time. God spoke to my heart and he said, you're here for my women. And I just knew at that moment, mm -hmm. the gravity of what he was calling me to. But to see the depth of it has been such an experience over the years. And it continues to grow with my ministry. I created a women's ministry called The Women in My World. Mm -hmm. We went from two women. He told me, bring women together. I want you to praise my name first and then pray. We went from two to 25. Now we have several hundred. I have a nonprofit now where we actually disciple. We provide resources and education and we put women in the field of making content. So they're actually wow. on set. They're whether it's hair, makeup, or it's cinematographers, or whatever it is, we are actually now providing those resources to put them there to be storytellers. And so I'm getting to see this incredible journey that I can't even, I can't even imagine what he has in store for me. Like I'm still going, oh, every day is just something new and exciting. I just hope that he continues to use me and keep doing with me what he desires to do. And, mm. you know, they always say like people go, I, I think about retiring, I think it's the moment that God goes, there's nowhere in my word does it say to retire, but I can refire you and do something to use for my glory mm -hmm. and so i just keep thinking just keep using me divine influencer begins streaming to pure flix's platform this coming friday that is july 21st we've got to take a quick break right here but before we do it's time to share this week's story in pictures here's your studio five snapshot 
This weekend saw gospel's biggest night unfold in Las Vegas, the 38th annual Stella Awards, hosted this year by singers Jonathan McReynolds and Tasha Cobbs Leonard. We hit the red carpet, the pre-show, and backstage to bring you a few looks inside the night of grand celebration before the program airs on BET next month. Gospel great C.C. Winans, Dr. Bobby Jones, and Reverend Dr. Milton Bingham receive high honors for their work on the show. Looking ahead, this is your Studio 5 Snapshot. Coming up next. Opening box office numbers show fans are racing to theaters for this latest installment of Mission Impossible. John and I are jumping out of the helicopter. He's gonna chase me. That's what we say to each other. Don't be careful, be confident. And the film star Tom Cruise is taking Studio 5 inside the impossible stunts. Welcome back to Studio 5. It's a long-awaited summer hit. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning premiered a week ago, pulling in $16 million opening night. It's the seventh installment in the film series. Tom Cruise is again in the starring role in a race around the world to track down a weapon before it's too late. In case you missed it or you haven't seen it, Cruise takes us inside the stunt-filled ride. for years. We're going to shoot it in Norway, and it'll be a motorcycle jump off a cliff into a base jump. I wanted to do it since I was a little kid. It all comes down to one thing, the audience. There's a lot going into this stunt. So Tom put together this master plan to coordinate all of these experts in each of the particular disciplines involved to make this whole thing happen. John and I are jumping out of the helicopter. He's gonna chase me. That's what we say to each other. Don't be careful, be confident. When you do a lot of jumps back to back, the canopy control skills improve a lot. We have three open canopies, which is a good thing. The training's gone really well. It's progressive massively. Hey, McHugh. How are you? Great day, man. This is the next part of training right here at the motocross. Let's do it. So we built a motocross track. Getting comps in the motocross, so he's comfortably jumping 70, 80 foot tabletop. Great time in the air, great positioning on the bike, landing well. I have to get so good at this that there's just no way that I miss my marks. That's good. Come a little closer to me. Coming up with the stunt is only one of the technical challenges. The other is putting a camera in a place that you can see where Tom is doing it. Finding the right lens, the right platform, the right medium. Even two years ago, the cameras didn't exist that would allow us to do what we're trying to do today. You train and drill every little aspect over and over and over and over again. They were doing 30 jumps a day. The key is me hitting certain speeds and being consistent with that. There's no speedometer, so I do it by sound and feel of the bike. And then as I depart the bike, I'm using the wind that's hitting me here, and I'm cupping my chest. That will give me lift. Here in Norway, we've been constructing this ramp over a number of months. Everything here has to be brought in by helicopter. Engineers and technicians, it's incredible what they've done. This is masterful. I'll try not to smile. Basically, when he gets down and puts a parachute on and goes and does the uh, bike jump, he'll actually know the weather conditions in this area, in the valley, and on the ground. Of course, you know, when something's been done for the first time, you can't help but worry a little bit about how it's really going to turn out. You're falling. If you don't get a clean exit from the bike and you get tangled up with it, if you don't open your parachute, you're not going to make it. Three, two, one, action! I saw a cabbie. 
I saw a canopy. <laughs> Thank you. Pretty much the biggest stunt in cinema history. Tom Cruise just rode a motorcycle off a cliff. <laughs> the only thing that scares me more is what we have planned for Mission 8. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is playing in theaters right now. With that, we have made it to this week's number one story in the countdown of uplifting entertainment. Here it is. At number one, this moment. An emotional Damar Hamlin presenting the team staff who saved his life with the Pat Tillman Service Award at this year's ESPYs. Please welcome this year's recipient of the Pat Tillman Award for Service, the training staff of the Buffalo Bills. It's been about seven months since the 25-year-old Bills safety suffered cardiac arrest on the field following a tackle during the game against the Cincinnati Bengals, prompting prayer on the field and around the country. I'm humbled and honored to be speaking tonight representing the Buffalo Bills athletic training and medical staff. By the grace of God and divine intervention, we had the best outcome we could have prayed for or imagined. Well, we are just about out of time for this edition of Studio 5. Before we go, let's look ahead to a story on next week's rundown. I wonder if I might trouble you for a hot meal and a hitch for my horse. My husband takes great delight in my minister into random desperados. An early look at a new Western with a very rich theme of faith. Birthright Outlaw. Oh, you're the director. What inspired this? Birthright, uh, it's, it's just a fun Western word, right, when you hear the word birthright. But it, uh, it's an ancient word that uh, talks about our origins and talks about the baggage that we're born with, for good or for ill. Right? My name is Rose Bridges. I am a fugitive from justice. Marriage is a promise. You got no one to stand firm when it's right and being when it's necessary. But you always, you always stand together. Please join us for that story and so much more come next week. Before we say goodbye this week, we've got time for just one more thing, and that's going to be a final word from actress Karen Abercrombie. If you could go back in light of where you are in the journey now and give advice to little Karen, what would you tell that little girl? Daddy's got you. Um, he sees you parents were alcoholics, mother was also a drug user. Um, I am your father. I am the source of all you will ever need. And I've got you. Karen, thank you. That is a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then come on back. See where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for watching.